Hey everybody, after the extraordinary demonstration of the T-49's capabilities, we now have a good demonstration of the T-37's capabilities. Now this tank is basically the old chaffy. Um, you know, it looks slightly different, obviously it has a different hull, but it's roughly the same size and same shape and it performs exactly the same sort of role in exactly the same sort of way. The only difference is it's a tier 6. Arctic region isn't really one of my preferred maps for light tanks. Uh, depending what you're in, sometimes with the ELC, you used to be able to get really good spots off across the sort of center of the map. Now it's not so easy, people have got wise to it, know where to shoot. Um, they know that if they're lit in a certain position that there's an ELC in a certain bush and they just blind fly you. Um, better light tank players than me could probably work something out. I have no doubt in my mind that more competent players could find a way, but I'm not that good at lights, I'm not that good at passive scouting because I'm patient and I don't know the best positions to do it from. So that's something somebody else to cover but in any case when I get a light on this map I'm usually somewhat disappointed apparently not Marius because Marius proceeded to really do quite a lot this match he had an absolute ripper of the game and I think anyone would be happy with this kind of result so he takes this spot up here which is somewhere I actually often go with medium tanks it's kind of risky but it puts him in a good spot to just be an asshole. And as long as things don't start firing back from across his own side of the map, he should be mostly okay here. Unfortunately, he's having trouble with this leopard. It's just moving too quickly to get a decent shot on. JP's having trouble as well, obviously. But that's okay because the enemy T-37 has exposed himself. So Marius gets a shot in there. Leopard finally goes down, but the JP's just suicided in his tank to kill it. Not a good uh, exchange. Really, he should have just let it go and let somebody else clean it up once it makes a mistake. There's no reason to suicide a tier 7 TD for a tier 5 light tank, even if it is a very good tier 5 light tank. There's not really much for Marius to do in the middle. The Stuart email makes it too risky, so does the Roomba. And the, just the number of light tanks around there, there's too much fire that can head towards him if he gets spotted in the middle. So instead he decides to try and help Scoots out on this corner here, since the friendly Type 59 and Super Pershing think that they're snipers. It's slow play here from Marius. It would seem to me he's trying to decide what to do. Often when I'm trying to think of what to do next, I'll kind of drive around it. It might look aimless, but it does have a purpose. Um, even if that purpose is mainly to stop you from suiciding your tank, doing something stupid while you're distracted. A little bit of falling damage there, but not too bad. little bit risky there from Marius, but he just wants to see what's there, get them lit for the two geniuses trying to provide fire cover from behind. Enemy T-37 across the way is just asking to be shot. And Marius isn't about to deny him that. Unfortunately, the Super Pershing gets it first. More interested in shooting a light tank than shooting a Type 59 that's molesting scoots. Again, all these carry automatic extinguishers. This per no, sorry, T32 in the Pershing burned full duration because it had no extinguisher. So, what should have been a 120 damage shot, 125 damage shot for Marius, ended up being 874 damage on a tier 8 heavy. It's just stupid. Don't let your tank burn. 
I've seen people make arguments, oh, well, you know, if I get rations, my whole crew's better and I'm less likely to get hit. No, no, trust me, I've been there. I've used crew consumables, I've used oil, I've used all the speed governor, all that shit. It doesn't matter, because if you get hit and your tank begins to burn, you're effectively out of the game. And even if that only happens once in 50 games, it's one in 50 games where you've just thrown away your tank and are going to be a dead weight on your team. It's not worth it. I mean, even if you have to sacrifice a piece of equipment to carry something else, get rid of, say, the first aid kit or the repair kit or something, but even then I wouldn't fire you. The automatic fire extinguisher and then repair kit and med kit are pretty much compulsory on anything that isn't party. I suppose you could argue why tanks could get away without the fire extinguisher, but again, um, I think that a lot of the time it is actually better to carry the extinguisher than something that only offers a very, very small boost to your crew skills or to your tank's speed. So the Typhus 9 finally decides to push up, putting him to decide to join the match, and Marius helps him bully the enemy Type 59 into the water. However, there's still some big guns up ahead. Wow. Just wow. That looks like... It came in, clipped the rangefinder, somehow didn't damage the actual optics hitbox. Um, obviously, the, the rangefinders aren't actual health point or hit point hitboxes, but I think they will damage your optics. So it somehow hit that, went through it without damaging it, and then just skipped off the side of the turret. It was a 128mm shell. T37 strong in the woods. Obviously, bad angle fast moving target makes it very difficult to pen, but I'm impressed that that didn't find a way to overmatch. No chance of hitting there, Marius didn't have gun depression. Um, I think he probably only realised that after he committed, so he just took the shot and walked back anyway. I do it every now and then, you know, sometimes you just don't quite think it through, and to avoid looking like too much of an idiot, you want to get a shot off anyway. Marius waits for the Roomba to get unspotted and probably rock back around the corner before crossing over. Manages to do so safely, takes a blind shot on the way. No idea what the Hummel is doing, other than throwing his tank away. Now the Roomba is on reload now, uh, which could potentially have let Marius get in and kill it, but it wouldn't be worth the risk. Things could still go either way at this point, but it's looking pretty decent for Marius' team. The IS-6 is isolated, or was isolated, he's now come back. But he's low on health, Marius is behind him, and the Type 59 is right on his flank. So it's a bad position for him to be in. It was a good thing that the 59 actually did move in when he did and was able to cut the IS-6 off, preventing it from getting up next to the Roomba and then strong point in that corner. Not that it would have mattered because, you know, when that kind of thing happens it's usually a lost hope anyway, but it at least saved some hit points on Marius' team. The IS-6 decides he's a more threatening target than the 59, pays for it badly. Although there was really no way that could have ended positively for him. Again, the Roomba goes for Marius instead of the 59. He must really want him. But, he does go down. Took a bit of teamwork there. And now it's just the SU-14 to deal with. Marius goes looking. Probably should have checked a little more carefully over that hill. Um, I think he might have proxy the bell that was there, but I know it's down here, having already watched the replay. Always serves to just check things a little more carefully. Marius got a bit carried away there and blew himself up on it. But when you uh, go looking for Artie like that, always check over hills and into bowls and 
try and proxy things if you can't actually get up next to them. It just saves having to go back later, um, as in one of my replays probably about a year or a year and a half ago now, where I was forced to drive basically all the way back across the map in a time-sensitive situation to finish off an arty I would have seen earlier had I bothered to scout properly. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Good demonstration of what a light tank can do when it doesn't get blown up in the opening 30 seconds of the match. They really can lay out some hurt, it's just they're so fragile that you need a bit of restraint and a bit of patience, a little bit of cunning to know how to apply that, that rapid rate of fire and just good flexibility. We've got a couple more 9.4 replays to go and then we'll be done with 9.4 and I can finally patch my game to 9.5 and actually start playing again for the first time in about a month and a half. So I'm probably going to be a bit rusty, but we'll have to see then. I wish you the best of luck in the field and I will see you on the next one.